Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Complete Works. My name is Doug Hess, and I am your host. If you're tuning in to The Complete Works for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. Uh, what we do here on this podcast is, is to discuss a specific movie from a film actor, actress, director, or composer's film career. Currently, we're working way through the Nicolas Cage uh, film career. And on this episode of The Complete Works, we're going to be discussing um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is a little bit different instead of an action movie with uh, humans, this is an uh, animation that we're going to be talking about, but we'll uh, j- jump into that movie here in just a few minutes. If you'd like to find out more about the Complete Works podcast, um, what you can do is go out to film-book.com. Again, that's film-book.com by using the search term, The Complete Works. You can also email us at podcast at filmbook.com. Again, f- podcast at film-book.com. Throw in the complete works uh, in the subject line, or you can uh, place in there Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. We'd love to hear from you uh, and get your feedback uh, on the show. If you like what you hear on this podcast, please hit the subscription button. So every time that we do load a new podcast, it's automatically uploaded um, to wherever you uh, get your podcast uh, from. Um what we're going to do here is, like I said, we're going to be talking about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. But before we jump into the actual film, um, I'd like to give you a little background uh, information on the film. Talk about the budget, um, production, uh, talk a little bit about who's in the, in the film. Then we're going to be talking about some trivia, some neat things that I thought uh, that you would like to hear about uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, for this particular uh, film... There is a ton of trivia or information that uh, that I was able to um, collect. We're not going to be able to get through everything because, like I said, it's just really a lot of information. And what I did was went in there and kind of took out some of the highlights, some information that I thought you might be interested in. Then we're going to do a, a quick uh, synopsis of the film, and then I will give you my thoughts on it um, as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. Um, to this um, edition of the Complete Works. Again, we're uh, working our way through the Nicolas Cage film career, and right now we're doing Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's an uh, animated uh, feature. Uh, The budget for this was approximately about $90 million. Uh, It opened uh, in the U.S. on December the 16th, 2018, and brought in a little over $35 million. Uh, It grossed uh, in the U.S.A., 190 million uh, worldwide gross was approximately a little over 375 million uh, in um, in worldwide uh, gross. The runtime on this particular movie is uh, 117 minutes, and the production company is Sony Pictures Entertainment, Columbia Pictures, and Marvel Entertainment um, in there. So, who are some of the voice actors, if you will, some of the voices that you hear? in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, obviously, we have Nicolas Cage uh, that's in there. Um, we have Jake Johnson, who plays Peter B. Parker, uh, Hallie uh, Steinfeld, Gwen Stacy, uh, Brian Trier Henry, Je- Jefferson Davis, Lily Tomlin, um, who has the voice of Aunt May, uh, Zoe Karvik, uh, Mary Jane, uh, Nicholas Cage, like I said, is uh, Spider-Man Nero. Uh, Catherine Han is um, Doc. Chris Pine is also um, in the movie as well, and his voice um, will be for Peter Parker. Um, the writers of this um, animation is uh, Phil Lloyd. And, I'm sorry, Lord, Phil Lord. Uh, he's a screenplay, and Rodney Rothman is this uh, screenplay as well. Um, the directors of this particular film is Bob, uh, and I'm probably going to uh, mispronounce the name, but it's Perchetti and Peter Ramsey uh, are the two directors in this particular film. And before we jump into the actual uh, body of the film, um, like I said, I like to do a little trivia, tons of trivia on this particular movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and so I'm going to 
I have quite a few of highlights that I, that I want to talk about. There's a lot here before we really jump into the film here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So it was announced shortly after Stan Lee's death at the age of 95 that he had recorded a cameo for the film and that it would be his final voice acting uh, role. Um, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller felt it was important that Lee was given a bigger uh, moment compared to previous Marvel films because he was so integral to the spirit of this movie and considered his role extra meaningful because the following of his death. Um, if you hit the pause anytime as a train goes by, um, what you can see is uh, in almost every single um, train, uh, a picture or um, an animated Stan Lee, and this was way this was because of the animators wanted to uh, uh, animate Stan Lee throughout the movie. Uh, completing the animation for the film required up to 180 uh, um, a amateurs. Woo, can't even talk tonight. And the largest screw ever uh, used by Sony Pictures Animation for a film. Uh, the film was dedicated in memory of Spider-Man's co-creator, Steve Deco, who died on July 6, 2018, while this film was uh, finishing production. However, this was not the only dedication, as we all know, as a month later before the film was released. Stan Lee died on November the 12th, uh, 2018, and so the film was de dedicated to both of the Spider-Man's creators. Uh, Phil... Lord and Christopher Miller had a goal for the movie, and it was to inspire people to become heroes, inspire grown-ups to help them do it, and remind us all that you don't have to be bitten by a radioactive spider to do your part. You are powerful, and we're all counting on you. At the 52-minute mark uh, within the, the film, uh, the bagel text as the, the bagel hits the scientist's head, was a joke pitch to an animator who really took it seriously and added it in, and everybody seemed to love it uh, when they did that. Uh, Phil Lord described uh, the Aunt May of Spider-Man verse as kick-ass and fierce. The filmmakers were actually thinking of Lily Tomlin uh, for the Aunt May role when they were writing the script, so they were really happy when she accepted the role. Uh, Nicholas Cage was excited that the uh, directors let him have fun with the role of Spider-Man Noir. Uh, Cage said, it's no secret that I like to play with different sources. It was fun to go back in time and pull a little Humphrey Bogart. Um, Cage thinks that the movie will appeal both to both uh, adults and to older or old movies as the kids who want to learn more um, about them. Uh, to eliminate motion blurs in the film the majority of the animators was done in twos so what does that mean uh, that means that there were only 12 images per second rather than the usual 24 in terms of that and that was helped eliminate the motion blurs in the film uh, one of the many ways the image workers team paid tribute to the old comic books through the visual style was to imitate the imperfections of offset print it was the first non-Disney or Pixar film to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature since uh, Ringo 2011, as well as the sixth non-Disney slash Pixar film to win this award. During the ending, Miles zips past a store called Perry Joe, a reference to Joe Perry, lead guitarist of Aerosmith, and noted Spider-Man fan who performed the theme song for Spider-Man, the animated series. So a little shout out there to uh, Joe Perry. Uh, Kingpin is the model after the Kingpin in Dead, uh, Daredevil, excuse me, Love and War, 1986 graphic novel. Uh, one day, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller was walking on Oliver Street, an outdoor marketplace in historical downtown uh, L.A., and they were stunned by the number of people in Spider-Man masks. Uh, this experience uh, partially inspired the film's idea that anywhere, anyone can wear the mask, which Stanley always said was true, that anybody could be Spider-Man. Uh, the Air Jordan 1 retro OG original story sneakers were inspired by the ones Miles Morales wears in the film. 
Keep your eye out for Stan Lee's character. In addition to Miles visiting his store, Lee can be seen about town throughout the film, which is when uh, Miles and Peter B. laid in the crosswalk. According to a recent Vanity Fair article, the filmmakers were already in London scoring the film by the time they had uh, the idea to do a holiday track. Phil Lord didn't know that Chris Pine, who plays Peter uh, Parker in, in Miles' universe, could sing at first. And so that was kind of a, a neat little surprise there. Producer, production designer Justin K. Thompson learned how to draw as a kid to try uh, by trying to copy the art that he saw in the comics. He also has been a Spider-Man fan ever since his childhood. They went through uh, 70 or so different versions of how Miles would look when he would uh, become invisible. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, producer Christopher Miller describes the heart of the movie as this. One of the key themes of the movie is that we all have powers. And we all need to face up to our responsibility, regardless who we are or where we are born. Uh, with Lily Tomlin playing Aunt May, all four actresses to play her in the theatrical um, film has been Academy Award nominees. After Rosemary Harris, Sally Field, and Marissa Tomei, uh, Tomlin was nominated for Nashville in 1975. The Blue Man Group is called the Red Man Group in the movie. Uh, as the Peter of Miles universe goes over his backstory as part of the film, he has uh, dis uh, distinctively blonde hair, and if you're paying close enough attention, blue eyes, letting the audience know that this uh, universe isn't exactly what we're all familiar uh, with. At the one hour and 23 minute mark um, in the film, the, memor the memor mem memorable, ho hopefully I'll get it there, shot of uh, Miles falling, rising, was written in the very first draft of the script as a st stage direction. Among the uh, logo shown for Columbia Pictures is a woman, a Western wear, shooting six guns. Uh, this is from the film Cat Ballou. In 1965, starring Jane Fonda and Lee Marvin. The car ride with Miles uh, in back and his dad driving was recorded with them sitting in chairs set up like a car to give them the proper uh, dynamics. Let's see here. Golden State Warrior basketball legend Stephen Curry uh, became a pro uh, golf pro in Miles' universe with a billboard taunting him, taunting him as a golden boy of the sport. Uh, truth is, in television, as Curry is an avid, talented golfer uh, in the offseason in his own right. The comic book version of uh, Prowler wears green and purple, but production designer Justin K. Thompson and team gave him an all-purple pur costume in the movie. They also added claws in that. Uh, the movie was announced during the 2014 Sony Hack. There's a billboard with Scarlett Johansson advertising Luce, uh, an alternative universe version of Lucy, which was released in 2014. Uh, in Peter Parker's secret hideout, uh, an array of Spider-Man costumes from various Spider-Man comics and video games are on display. And then we also know that Jake Johnson, who voices Peter B. Parker, Parker excuse me, in the movie, says that Phil Lord and Christopher Miller were a big reason that he wanted to be part of this project. Johnson says there were two, they were two of the most talented filmmakers working in the field right now. They are so innovative and smart, and when they tackle something like Spider-Man, you know they're going to get it right. This is a property uh, that fans really love, so you want to make sure that it's in the hands of the right people, and also they love and care about it as much as the fans do. So a... Uh, Huge shout out to uh, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller uh, from P uh, excuse me Jake Johnson, who plays uh, Peter B. Barker, P. Parker in the film. Excuse me. There, uh, there is a Stanley 
quote, after the first part of the credits, it reads that people who helps others simply because it should or must be done and because it's the right thing to do is indeed, without a doubt, a real superhero. Uh, the sneaker Miles wear, wears in Nike Air Jordans 1 Retro High Tops. Um, the sneakers Miles wear are uh, Nike Air Jordans 1 Retro High Tops. Sorry about that. Can't even read my own writing, it looks like. Um, Hallie uh, Steinfeld says her character, Gwen Stancy, Stacy, uh, she's really just the toughest, coolest, smartest, and the most keepable one in the room, and she knows it. Uh, the approval stamp on Miles' True Life Tales of Spider-Man comics are from the Cabin Fever production code rather than the Comics Code Authority. The film received a nomination for Best Animated Features Film at the 76th Golden Globe, Globe Awards. And Tobey Maguire was almost cast as the older Peter Parker, but the filmmaker featured, uh, feared that the audience would find it too confusing. As we all know, the, uh, Tobey Maguire was in the uh, Spider-Man movies. Um, this was Nicolas Cage's second animated film released in 2018 after Teen Titans Go to the movies in 2018 as well. Uh, the film won the Academy Award for the Best Animated Film. Snapchat is still uh, Peekaboo, and Google is still called Backrub in the film. Uh, so when we look at inflation, it hits uh, this world like a truck as Peter and Miles, um, their hamburger and fries at a small restaurant totals up to uh, approximately $30,000. But only in the trailer, all the prices are normal in the final film. In the first Spider-Man film to win an Oscar since Spider-Man 2, which was back in 2004, which won an Oscar for Best Visual Effects. Uh, this is Sony's Pictures Animation's first full-length animated features to win Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards. In addition, this film uh, beat out The Incredibles 2 in 2018, another CGI superhero, superhero film that was released in 2018. The first Spider-Man-related movie to feature Kingpin, uh, Tombstone, and Prowler. During the flashback uh, sequence when Peter B. Parker, Jake Johnson, uh, recalls his manager to Mary Jane, he steps on a, on a glass at the end of the ceremony. Many viewers uh, took this as an indication that Peter B. Parker was being uh, depicted as Jewish, an interpretation that was later verified by the movie's co-director, Rodney Rothman, in his, 2000, excuse me, in his uh, February 2019 interview uh, by Jerry Miller in the Jewish Journal. Uh, the film was IGN's 2018 movie of the year. Miles seeing that the Spider-Man uh, of his universe had a costume with a cape may seem like a brick joke, but it's based on what if story about Spider-Man never becoming a crime fighter. When Miles buys the buys the Spider-Man costume, a mask resembling a monster festival patron wore near the end of Hotel Transylvania 2012 is when that was uh, released, uh, can be seen. It, in the background of Gwen's reality in her focus trailer is a poster advertising Clone College with Abe and JFK in similar positions to the poster for 22 Jump Street. Uh, police ve vehicles aren't ex exempt from wearing register plates, as seen on Miles' dad's police cruiser. The lights on police cruisers flash in red and blue instead of red and white. Um, a PG-13 version of the film was submitted to the uh, MBAA, MPAA, but was never released due to a dispute. Uh, the film um, held its premiere at the Regency Village Theater in Los Angeles on December the 1st, 2018, and it featured a tribute to the late Stan Lee. It was the second film that was ever based on a Marvel Comics to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature. The first was Big Hero 6, 
back in 2014. With the role, uh, with his role as as a voice of Peter Parker, Chris Pine becomes the fourth Chris to play the Marvel hero on the big screen. At, on the big screen after Chris um, Evans, the Human Torch in Captain America, Chris Hensworth, Thor, and Chris Platt, Pratt as Star Lord. This was Spider Man's animated feature film debut. This was Marvel's first animated feature film. Uh, let's see here. The Peter in Miles universe has blonde hair instead of the usual brown. Uh, this was Peter Ramsey's first co-director credit in his first After Rise of the Gall Guardians back in 2012 from DreamWorks Animation, which also starred Chris Pine. And we'll just wrap it up here with a few more uh, trivial or trivi trivial um uh, nuggets. Uh, Catherine Haynes, uh, second villain role after Hotel Transylvania 3, uh, Summer Vacation in 2018. This is the first Spider-Man film since Spider-Man in 2002 to feature Norman um, Osborn as the Green Goblin. Co-writer Rodney Rothman became co-director in late 2017 as the film entered post-production. This was the 19th theatrical film production by Sony in a, Animation. Chris Pine, who plays Peter Parker, Spider-Man, is twice referred to as Spider-Man more than a decade earlier in, to, in the 2006 movie Just My Luck. Like I said, it was released in 2006. Uh, this film cast two Oscar winners. One of them is Nicolas Cage and two Oscar nominees. Holly Steinfeld and Lily Tomlin. And we'll give you one more here to kind of wrap it up. Uh, this was Jake Johnson's third animated film after the Lego movie 2014 and Smurfs The Lost Village 2017, uh, the latter of which was also from Sony Animation. So a lot of uh, trivia. There's a lot more that I could have provided on this particular film. Uh, just because of time, I wanted to uh, kind of give it, uh, um, cut a lot of it out. But like I said, I could have provided a lot more um, on that. So let's jump in and talk a little bit about um, this film. And like I said, we're, we're talking about Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And what we find here is uh, Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse is a 2018 American um, computer animated superhero film featuring the Marvel Comics character Miles Morales, Spider-Man, which was produced by Columbia Pictures and Sony Pictures Animation in association with Marvel. It was distributed by Sony Pictures um, releasing. It, this is the first animated feature film in the uh, Spider-Man franchise and is set to uh, be a shared multiverse called the Spider-Verse, which has alternative universes in it. The film was directed, uh, like I said, by uh, Bob Bershkowski, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, and Peter Ramsey, um, and then Phil Lord and Roth, Rothman um, were also the screenplay writers in, in this. Okay, so what is the plot of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Uh, teenage Miles uh, Morals struggles to live up to the expectations of his father, who is a police officer, Jefferson Davis, who seeks or sees Spider-Man as a menace. Miles transforms into a boarding school, but later sneaked out and goes to his uncle Aaron Davis' apartment when he takes Miles to an absorbent abandoned subway station to paint graffiti Miles is then bitten by a radioactive spider and gains spider-like uh, abilities. Miles returns to the station to search for the spider and discovers a partial... Um, uh, I'm sorry, folks. I uh, lost my uh, train of thought there. Um, um, so Miles returns back to the station to search for, uh, for the spider and he, he finds uh, an accelerator called the Spider Collider, uh, built by Kingspin, um, who hopes 
to access parallel universes and bring back his dead family. Miles then notices Spider-Man has arrived and is attempting to disable the collider while fighting King, King Pin's forces, the Green Goblin and uh, Prower. Spider-Man saves Miles, but the Green Goblin uh, shoves Spider-Man into the collider, causing an explosion that kills the Green Goblin. Several wounded um, uh, are there. Spider-Man gives uh, Miles a USB drive that will disable the accelerator and warns that the machine could destroy the city if uh, it's ever reactivated. Uh, Miles watches in horror as King, Kingpin then brutally kills Spider-Man before fleeing from Prowler. Uh, so Miles finds out that his newfound abilities in a Spider-Man costume but damaged the USB drive after falling off a building at Spider-Man's uh, grave, or excuse me, I should say at Spider-Man's grave, Miles meets Peter B. Parker, an older and worn down version of Spider-Man from another uh, uh, dimension. Miles in inadvertently discovers a power to emit a bio-electronic uh, venom blast to stun and disable his victims. Peter then reluctantly agrees to train Miles in exchange to help stealing data to create a new drive. Kingpin's uh, res research facility, uh, Miles discovers he also has the power to turn invisible. They are confronted by the scientist Oliver Octavus, who takes DNA samples from Peter and reveals that he will die due to the cellular decay if he stays in the dimension too long. So Miles and Peter are rescued by Gwen Stacy, spider woman from another dimension. The group finds uh, Peter's aunt, Mary Parker, who has shouldered more uh, heroes from other dimensions, and Spider-Man Nora, Spider-Man Ham, and Peanut Parker, who are all uh, uh, deteriorating. Miles uh, offers to dis disable the collider to, so the others can return home, but the heroes tell him he lacks the experience, and then Miles retreats to Aaron's home, where he discovers that Aaron uh, is the prower. He returns to May's, uh, Aunt May's house, where Pina has completed the uh, drive. However, he is followed by Kingspin, Prower, uh, and a whole bunch of other evil uh, individuals leading to a brawl. Miles flees, but is captured by Aaron and Unmask himself, unwilling, unwilling to kill Miles. Aaron is mortally shot by Kingpin, and Miles flees with Aaron, but Aaron dies from his injuries. Jefferson sees Miles mourning over Aaron and concludes that Spider Man has thus killed him in the process. So the hero regroups with Miles in, in his dorm. Peter restrains Miles. Uh, with his webs to ensure his safety before heading out with his heroes, choosing to sacrifice himself by staying behind and deactivating uh, the collider. Jefferson arrives outside Miles' door and, assuming he does not want to speak to him, apologizes for his mistakes. Miles then masters uh, his powers and goes to Aunt May's, where he gains web uh, shooters and repaints Peter's suit. He joins the superheroes and helps them defeat Kingpin's enforcement before uh, activating the SB USB drive and sending them home. Kingpin's and Miles fight throughout the collider, attracting Jefferson, Jefferson's attention. As Miles is nearly killed, Jefferson realizes that Spider-Man is not the enemy and encourages him. So Miles uh, paralyzes Kingpin with his venom blast and throws him at um, at the kill switch, destroying the collaborator. Uh, Kingpin and his um, enforcers are arrested, and Jefferson recognizes Spider-Man as a hero. Miles then embraces the responsibility of his new life back at their home, Dem Dementia. Uh, the heroes return to their lives. Peter prepares to fix his relationship with Mary Jane, and Gwen finds a way to con contact Miles across the other dementias. Um, so that was kind of a, a, a quick recap of, of the movie um, Spider-Man. Um, I thought that um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, 
here's what I'll, I'll say about it. I am not a big fan of these types of movies. Not, not that there's anything wrong with it. Not that um, it wasn't well done. That's just not necessarily my, my cup of tea. I like to see live uh, actors. I'm not a big fan of the animation. Uh, I'm also not a big fan of musicals. Doesn't mean that I don't uh, watch them and they're not good. I would just prefer something else. So having that said, um, okay, give me a little slack there in, in terms of that. But overall, I thought the, that the film was, was fun. I think that Nicolas Cage is right on that others will um, enjoy it, both young and old. Um, in, in terms of that, uh, overall, uh, you've got a, a star lineup of stars in the movie. Um, like we said, two Academy Award winner or Oscar, yeah, uh, Academy Award winners, two of them that were non nominated. Uh, they do a wonderful job in the film uh, in, in terms of um, <clears throat> the, the plot. Uh, like I said, just not my cup of tea, but it, it's not because it's not a good movie. It's just, it's just not something that, that I personally enjoy. But uh, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. Um, overall, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being at the very high, highest, I would give it an 8. Obviously, it was an Academy Award winner. Uh, the only reason I, I would, wouldn't give it as, as uh, any higher than an 8 is just, again, my own personal bias, which is kind of hard to take out of it. Uh, but I think it's a film that uh, a lot of people will enjoy, uh, both the younger and older uh, population that would enjoy the film um, in terms of that. So it's definitely worth a chance to to um, uh, to review, to watch. Uh, like I see it said, uh, Stan Lee, um, watch for some of his uh, appearances in the film. Um, and like I said, it is his last uh, voice recording for a film uh, before his uh, death at the age of 95 in November of, uh, of 2018, in terms of that. So, uh, we'd like to thank you for listening to this episode of The Complete Works. Uh, work on film-book.com. You can just search under Doug Hess or The Complete Works. You can also find me on Twitter at HessDoug14. Again, that's HessDoug14. If you're um, listening to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please rate and review this episode. If you are listening to this podcast on your on our YouTube channel, uh, Film Book Podcast, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment in the comment, se comment section. Uh, tune in next time when I review and analyze the next Nicolas Cage film. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.